This morning, we're going to consider a message I have titled, Overcoming the Giants of Indecision and Loneliness. Overcoming the Giants of Indecision and Loneliness. And we're going to read just one verse of scripture for starters. And that is in 1 Samuel, which we're still studying, 1 Samuel 17, which we're still studying. And until the Holy Spirit releases us, we'll continue to study this chapter, 1 Samuel 17. This is the story where David overcame Goliath. We all have giants in our lives. We will continue to have giants coming to take that which is ours. But we thank God for victory in Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. We thank God because we are fighting from a position of victory. Amen. Amen. And the Lord who has called us will continue to grant us victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have looked at a lot of lessons to learn from David's journey so far. And we will continue to do so until right through to the end of the chapter. Today we're looking at verse 28 and we're looking at it in part. We are not even going to finish verse 28 today. We're going to continue next week. Verse 28 for Samuel 17 and verse 28. Thank you. He says, Now Eliah, his oldest brother, had when he spoke to the men and Eliab's anger was aroused against David and he said why did you come here and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness I know your pride and the insolence of your heart for you have come down to do what? To see, to see the battle. Huh. If only all our family members support us, work with us, and really, really, you know, are our biggest fathers and cheerleaders when we do things. Life will be a lot sweeter. Amen. Amen. Have you seen people achieve whatever and yet they're not fulfilled, happy until somebody in their life, somebody close to them, somebody they respect, somebody they admire, until that person says, well done. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever seen that kind of person? Are you that kind of person? Are there people in our lives that, no matter what we do, until they give us their approval, it's just like, it's not 100%. Diana, Princess of Wales, of blessed memory, walked into the biggest wedding ceremony of the century. Her tail, um, what's that thing called? Tail. Is it tail? Her bridal train. Trail. 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 The clocks, you yeah. know the clocks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're saying this um, for you so that when it's your turn, when you are doing this, you uh, know what to do. Her blood her dream was so long that there was nobody next to her because the tail was so long. Presidents, prime ministers, kings, queens, princes. Princesses, sheikhs, sultans, all were there. If you were not invited, if you had not been invited to Diana's wedding, 
you were not you were you might be important but not that important influencers rich famous musicians athletes met them everyone wanted to be in there to be part of this great and awesome ceremony the husband was dressed in royalty and as a general in the army and this most beautiful bride every bride is beautiful on their day amen, amen. you'll be beautiful on your day in the name of jesus christ amen. every bride is have you seen an ugly bride before they are all beautiful let's not let's not let's not go into that question they are all beautiful Diana was beautiful. Diana was beautiful. And here she came in her regalia and royalty and sweating into. I've forgotten the name. I don't know if it's in Paul's Cathedral or Westminster Abbey. Maybe Westminster Abbey. Wherever they had the ceremony. But you know what she will say later on? She said, as she came into the there was only one thing on her mind. Here was she on the hands of her father, the heir, leading her forward. And as she came in, there was only one thing she was thinking about. Was another lady there who was her competition. And she said, as she came in and saw all the crowd and everything, all she was looking for was that one lady. And she scanned her whole place until she found her in a corner, dressed in gray. A sign of unhappiness. Morning. He said, and the moment she saw her dressed in gray in a corner, it didn't matter what else happened on the day. That was where it ended for her. Can you imagine how royalty traveled from their countries to be part of her wedding? How her family, everyone, the media, the world, millions of people watching all over the world, Diana getting married. And yet for Diana, it was only about how many people? One person. And she kept scanning. And maybe if she hadn't seen her, maybe she would have been happy that, oh, she's not here today. But the moment she saw her in the corner, in gray, all the joy, happiness that comes with getting married just left her. We see the power of people who are around us, who are close to us when it comes to achieving our goals and our aims. In what, you know, I always say, when somebody says things to you, maybe you're driving or you're on the road and somebody just spits out venom at you, what do you do? Some of us will respond back. Some of us will ignore them. Some of us will get angry uh, uh, for a short period of time. Then we get over it. You don't continue to think about what that person said to you. But let it be a family member. Let it be somebody close to you. And then you see, 10 years later, I remember on the 5th of January 2001 my husband said you are now fat and I never forgot why did it matter because it was somebody who was close to her and these things have an impact my mom said my dad said my best friend said my sister said 
My brother did not support me. My uncle did not support me. And because of the weight that we place on such people, because of the influence they have over our lives, guess what? If we're not careful, they can derail our future. And that's what we're talking about this morning. Overcoming the giants of indecision and loneliness. And we just read the story of Eliab here. Who was Eliab? Eliab was David's senior brother. Eliab was the first amongst, depending on which chapter you read, first among seven sons. Sometimes you read eight. But let's just say seven. First of seven sons. He was David's oldest brother. He would have influence. He would be the next to take over when the dad dies. So he was one of significance and importance to David's life. And here was David, rody, young, good looking, never been a soldier, angry that Goliath is taunting Israel. And he said, you know what? Let's do something about it. Let's do something. Let's go out. And here comes the elder, the eldest brother, not even elder brother. You know, some of us come from some families where the gap between the elders, or those say maybe same father, same mother, or same parents, or one parent, whatever, the gap between the first and the last can be very, very huge. In fact, it can be so huge that the first would have given back before the last born was born. Anybody ever seen that kind of thing from here? Yeah? Like the eldest brother is older, the eldest brother's son is older than the last born of the family. We have that in our family, so we're going to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where, you know, the eldest brother's son is an <laughs> the son is meant to be a nephew to the younger one. So the younger one is meant to be the uncle of the son. But the son is older than his uncle. Yeah. That's what happens when you don't stop at the right time. Anyways, Eliab's gap to David was huge. And as David was like, let's fight Goliath, let's do something about it. What did he do? He came and he shot him down. What did he say again? He says he laughs anger aroused against David and he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and insolence of heart. We'll deal with that next week. That's not for today. He said that pride and insolence. That's for next week. Let's just focus on Eliab's anger. Now, what impacts those lack of family support or lack of support from those around us, what impact can we have on us? First thing to write down this morning, your greatest giants can be within your own family or your mind. Ah. There is a battle to fight on your inside before you can win on the outside. There's a battle to fight at home before you can win out there. Your greatest giants can be within you or within your family. Don't give in to them. Don't give in to them. There are times when our God-given vision are at crossroads with what we are thinking or those closest to us. At that time, we must prioritize God. So let's break this down. Eliab's lack of support would have two key impacts. We would have two key impacts on David. And that's what we want to look at this morning. The first one is his lack of support could have led to indecision on David's part. 
Should he go ahead and fight or not? You know, if you want to do something, and although impossible, if you have the right people saying, go on, go for it, I know that it's easier for you to go ahead. But no matter how great or good that thing is, if your support network are against it, then you will have a mountain to climb. Here was David on the battlefront about to sacrifice his life for the nation. And what did his oldest brother do? He got angry with him. He said, how dare you? And you know, he laughed and that could have been out of care. Yeah, so let's, let's be real. You could have been out of, you are not a soldier, you are a shepherd, you just come, you now want to fight a warrior, the greatest warrior of our time. What on earth is wrong with you? That's possible. Could have been just out of care. He loves David so much, he doesn't want David to hurt himself. Could be. Or, it could be, give you three reasons why it might be. That's number one. Number two, it could be because of envy. Why would Eliab envy his own brother? Anything, anybody ever heard of sibling rivalry? Yeah? You're yeah, looking, always judging ourselves. Who's done better? Who's got more? Who can get the other one in trouble quicker? And all of that. David, in the previous chapter, had been anointed as king whilst Eliab was watching. Remember the story? Yeah? Samuel came into the house and said, I'm going to anoint one of you as king. And the father said, Eliab is the first one. Please anoint him. And Eliab knelt down and Samuel was about to pour the oil and God said, Stop! I have rejected him. Meaning, I tested him, he failed. I rejected him. And all the others came and God said, I rejected them all. And someone said, who else? I said, oh, we forgot. There is one little one in the wilderness. And someone said, go bring him. And he was anointed. So it could be out of jealousy. Oh, so because you've been anointed as him now, you think you can go anywhere. And just show yourself. Oh, God has chosen you as the deliverer of the people. Now you want to show yourself. It could be because of that. And like I said, number three, it could be because, so one, out of care, my brother, I don't want you to be hurt. Number two, out of pride, out of jealousy. Or number three, out of the fact that David does not have experience, you are inexperienced. Why do you want to? fight this man. Whatever the reason, what we know is that God had called David to do something for him. And now his own family members are standing, or his own family member is standing in the way. And like we said, that can lead to indecision on the part of David. I don't know about you. If I want to do something and my family are not in support, it makes me think again. You, you go back and think like, oh, is it really, is it really, is it really what I should be doing? I remember a man of God who we love and respect and we submit to. When God called him, he said, Lord, I'm not the issue, I'm not the problem. I know you have called me, go and speak to my wife. If my wife agrees, oh, we're, good, we're good. If my wife does not agree, I'm not going anywhere. And God had to go speak to the wife, and the wife agreed, and then the man is in ministry today. So, indecision, it can lead to lack of family support, can lead to indecision. Now, indecision is a giant within your own mind that you need to conquer. Let's look at an example of indecision in the Bible and the impacts indecision can have on our lives. We're looking at overcoming the giants of indecision and loneliness due to lack of family or due to lack of community support. Remember, support does not just to be, doesn't have to be family alone. It can be church, it can be friends, it can be people around us. Open your Bibles to Judges chapter 5. 
Judges chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. And we're looking at the NLT translation. Judges 5, 15 to 16. Judges 5, 15 to 16. He says the prince is NLT translation, if you can get it. Otherwise, we'll use what you have. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah and Barak. They followed Barak. So you see the Issachar people following Barak to the wall, rushing into the valley. But in the tribe of Reuben, what was there? He said there was great what? There was great indecision. There was great indecision. Verse 16. He says, why did you sit at home among the sheepfolds to hear the shepherds whistle for their flocks? Yes, in the tribe of Reuben, there was what? There was great indecision. There are many Christians. Oh, let's paint the context. Deborah had been called. Deborah said to Barak, go and fight these people and you will win. What did Barak say? I'm not going to go unless you go with me. Deborah said, I will go with you, but it means that the victory will be recorded as that of a woman. Barak said, I don't care who takes the victory as long as we win. So they went into the battle. And as they were going, they called on all the tribes of Israel, come and join us to fight this great army. Because the army was mighty. And as other tribes came, yes, let's go do this. We will all be free. What was happening in the tribe of Reuben? Ah, should we go? Should we not? Is it good to go or not? Maybe we should go. Maybe not. And there are many people today who are stuck in that valley of indecision. They cannot make up their minds on what they want to do with their lives. They cannot make up their minds on the next step that they have to take. It is a giant that must be conquered. Say amen. amen. It's a giant that must be defeated. Indecision is a giant that must be defeated. I'll come to impact of indecision and I'll tell you that regret is one of the impacts of indecision. But you see, it is better to have a regret over a failure than to have a regret over what you did not do. Should I repeat that? It is better to have a regret over something you did and did not work out. At least you tried. You gave it an effort. You tried your best. You did what you could and you failed and it's okay. But you see, the failure of indecision is a deeper regret. Because the devil will always say to you, if only you had done it, your life would have been changed. You would not have remained the same. And all that. The pride of Reuben had great indecision. They could not make up their minds whether to go to battle or not. Turn your Bible to Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 to 11. Proverbs 6 verse 6 to 11. All of us are making decisions every day. But please don't let your own decision be what? A decision. Proverbs 6 verse 6 to 11. Proverbs 6, 6 to 11. You can go back to NKJV now. He says, go to the ants, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Which have you no captain, overseer, or ruler? You know there's some people who cannot make decisions unless somebody else tells them. They are always waiting for somebody to tell them what to do. And if somebody tells them what to do, they will do it. They're happy. But for them to make that decision themselves, it is just impossible for them. And it doesn't have to be in the big things, even in the little things. Do you want a spoon or a fork? Which one do you think is better? 
Am I eating the food for you? Either. to make decisions in the little things. Because when you do that, you are practicing for the greater things. Should we leave at 9 or 9.30? I'm not sure. He says, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supply in the summer. It is the actions that you take that will determine your destiny. Nobody will reward you for thinking, ah, I have planned my future. What it's going to look like? I'll get married at 23, have my first child at 25, second child at 27, then travel the world until 35. Then, and then, and then, and then, and then, all that is good. Thinking, what steps, what actions are you going to take so that those things can become a reality? All of us can dream and wish for things, but often it's our indecisions which stop us from making progress. He says, she gathers her food in the harvest. Verse 9, how long will you slumber? Oh, slugger. You know, when he says slumber there, that is vacillating between decisions. When will you rise up from your sleep? A little sleep. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands. Do we have to make this decision today? Let's make it tomorrow. Let's make it next week. Okay, I'll think about it. Okay, I'm still thinking about it. Verse 11. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. It doesn't matter whether you are filled with the Holy Spirit or not. If you are plagued with indecision, you will find it difficult to move forward in life. So what's the impact of indecision? Maybe that's what we'll do today. And then we can do the other bit next week. Impact of indecision on our lives. Number one, it moves us very quickly into irrelevance. What is irrelevance? Lack of importance to or connection to a situation. If you see a man or woman who struggles with indecision, they will very soon become irrelevant. Not ask you. People will bypass you because they really they won't get anything from you. When the chips are down, you will be overlooked. Even in our workplaces, if we don't stand for something, if we don't say this is it, this is what we should be doing, they will bypass us because everyone is looking for a solution provider. And someone who is playing with indecision cannot be a solution provider. They say we have this problem. So how do you think we can solve it? E, e, what do you think? What do you, some of us are so good at throwing the question back. Throwing it back. You know, it's like um, I'm joking. I won't go there. I won't go there. But some of us are very, very good. We, we, we just flip it, you know. They ask you something, and instead of you answering, you flip it straight away. You know, and some of us are very, very good at it. Oh, boom! Ah. And you know, for some of us who reflect, we see those things and that, ah, they have done it again. Amen. Amen. I pray that you will not be overlooked for promotion in the name of Jesus. Amen. God wants to bless us. He doesn't want us to be evil. Imagine if they had Joseph. So, Joseph, I have had this dream. And I'm told you can interpret dream. This is the dream. Cow eating cow. But cow cannot eat cow because cow is not a cannibal. Cow eating cow. Impossible. Plant eating plant. But plant cannot eat plant because plant is not a cannibal. So, I've had a dream, Joseph. Cow eating cow. 
plant it in plant. What should we do? Pharaoh, what do you think? Ha! Pharaoh, what do you think? Indecision. Better to put forward your idea for him not to work, for him to fail, than for you not to put an idea forward. Somebody said, as you grow in leadership and management, he says, cut attention at all costs. Positively, negatively, cut attention. Talking about that some other time. So, the impact of it in this show, number one, red irrelevance. Number two, lack of progress. Being stuck in a situation for an extended period of time. You are unable to move forward because you have not decided. Lack of progress is an outcome of indecision. Indecision. Lack of progress. Should I? Should I not? Number three. Regrets. To feel sorry about something you have done or about something that you have not been able to do. That's the indecision part. Regrets. Ah, I wish. I just wish. Ah. You know, when I, when I met my wife, when I met my wife and we were initially friends for a short period of time, for a short period of time, and all that, and I eventually summoned up courage, it took a lot of courage, and it took a lot of support. I'm going to ask support from my family. Took a lot of support for me to walk up to her and say, hey, hey, obey the alpha, you know, and all that. <laughs> On the day we were announcing each other, ah, these two guys, these two guys, I love about that. I think I've said that he said it here before. Four men, four, four men were standing on the line. I see. <laughs> and the four of them walked up to me after. How did you do it? How dare you? They had cars. I didn't have a car. They had good jobs. I didn't have a job. They dressed well. I had two trousers. But I was not in the size. I knew what I wanted. I knew what I prayed about. And I went for it. And these guys came and I, how dare you? We were planning to we had plans, we had not. I'm like, sorry, I, you did not move. And I moved. And this is the result. Regrets over things we did not do. And if I had known, I would have done it at that time. Regrets, that's a good one. Number four, as we read in that Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to 11, poverty. Poverty plagues the indecisive because the steps we're meant to take we don't take so we are plagued he says so shall your poverty come unto you like a prowler and your need like an armed man and your need like an armed man and finally worry we live a life of worry you know why because until we solve the situation, we solve the problem, it's at the back of our mind. So we continue to worry over it over a long period of time. Oh, we've not done this, we've not done this, we've not done this, we've not done this. And because of that, we just worry instead of making a decision about something and moving on with our lives. Now, from David's life, we see or we saw that when his brother rose up against him, he did not stop him from continuing on to fight Goliath. So, my submission to you this morning is when your mind plagues you with indecision, should I, should I not? Will it work? Will it not? Nike gave us a solution. What did Nike say? He says, just do it. Step forward, do it. Just do it. 
You have thought about it enough. You have reflected on it enough. Just do what? Do it. Step forward. Do something. Some of us, we want to take a step of faith. And yet, we are allowing reason to stop us. Well, this is what I want to do. But uh, I know you can come up with this risk and with these challenges and all that. Just do it. Step out in faith. And God will honor your faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. David stepped forward. He did not have his brother's approval. He did not have his support. But he said, that is not going to stop me. Some of us are still stuck in the past. The time when somebody did not support us. In fact, some of us are still seeking support from people who will never support us. Ah, the complexity around about this. The complexity of human nature. Do you know that we, I don't know why we do this. We go to, we seek approval, we speak validation. That's what I'm looking for. Validation often from people who will never give them to us. They don't like us. They don't care about us. They don't care whether we are alive or dead and all that. And yet, we cannot move forward with our lives without their validation. So we continue to expose ourselves to them and they continue to cause us pain. They cause us pain. You know that some of us, we want to be friends with some people who don't want to be friends with you. And you try everything and then every day they just, you know, they just bash you and all of that. It's time we rise up and make up our minds that the future God has ahead of us, we will pursue and we will get there in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Stop delaying, stop delaying, darling, and remember that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James 1.8 a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. My challenge, my call to action this morning to all of us is let us stop being double-minded. Let us be single-focused. Decide what you want to go for and go for it. Because the world will not remember what you thought about. The world will not remember what you spoke about. The world will only remember what you achieved. Let's bow our heads to pray this morning. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we receive grace today to make the right decisions and to follow through with actions in the name of Jesus. Lord, sometimes the things staring at us looks insurmountable. But Lord, with you all things are possible. Bible says we can do all things, not a little, not a few, not many. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. For as many as those who are weak here this morning, when it comes to the area of decision making, Lord, I will decide impart strength unto them in the name of Jesus. Where you are weak, may the Lord make you strong. In the name of Jesus Christ, where you need help, receive help from above. In the name of Jesus, for as many as those who have been stuck in one situation or the other for the last few weeks, months, or years, receive breakthrough in the name of Jesus. This is your week of moving forward. This is your week of progress. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.